And now, marvel at this smooth movement. Oh. <sighs> Hi and welcome to Strackle. Today we're going to look at actually moving graphics around on our screen. Last episode we looked at how we could embed colour graphics into our program code uh, and now we're going to actually look at moving them about. For this, because we need a bit more speed and we're going to be working on a game called Frogger, uh, have a look on YouTube under RK Frogger, that's the game we're going to try and emulate. It needs a reasonable amount of colours, a reasonable amount of graphics. This all takes up quite a bit of memory, the normal Arduino is not up to it and it takes a bit more speed to move that amount of memory of graphics about as well so the ESP8266 can go between 80 megahertz or 160 megahertz uh, this is the Nord MCU development board I've got which I've got an 8266 on it has one mega program memory which you imagine that's a lot to store any graphics for back in the day sort of arcade games and it has around about 96k of RAM of which in the standard system when using it you have about 50 odd k that you can play with your cell for your own uses the remaining RAM is used up by the system that's loaded onto the chip as well to help you develop with. So if you go to extronical.com and you go to projects and Frogger, we're going to look at um, speed and flicker. So if you saw in the intro, it flickered really badly. So we'll go through what we did last time, we only put a, a static graphic on the screen, so it was no biggie. So if you go in here and it takes you through about requirements for a game, if you think about doing a game, You've got to think about its resolution, its memory usage, and which speed you think you might need. And that's when I decided I'd need the color screen and an ESP8266 of some sort of variant. Uh, and the first code is just displaying a graphic on the screen, just statically like we did before. So if we come down, what we're going to do now is we're going to try and move that graphic. So I printed a frog on the screen. We're going to try and move that graphic and wait, giving too much away. We'll just go here. So we're going to copy that code. So you click on that little icon I've just done there, Control C, paste that into your Arduino, and click Compile, and Upload. So I'll do that, I'll cut out this bit of video, and we'll go straight to the screenshot. So yeah, if you look at the screen, you can see that we get two parallel green lines going down for some reason. If we come back to the code, I'll explain what they are. It tells you on that, um, on extranarchy.com as well. But we've cleared the screen to black, the entire screen, and then we draw the frog. That's what this line's doing. Saying so draw this bitmap of this frog and position X and Y. X is the center of the screen at 56. Y is at position zero, which is the top of the screen. And then we change Y by one pixel at a time until it gets to 128 and then it stops. Now if you look at the frog graphic close up and we'll just bring it on, I think I've got it on here. There we go. The two lines are the top of its eyes here, these two pixels here, the very top of the eye, are what's happening because what you're doing is with this code, let's pop back to that, you're drawing it at say position 0 which is your first starting value and then you're incrementing y to 1 and then you're overdrawing, so imagine that frog has been drawn at position 0 then you're redrawing that entire graphic one pixel down so the frog will move one pixel down but these two pixels are still on screen, you're not doing anything with them, you're not removed them or anything so it moves one pixel down, draws it all, and then two pixels are still there. Repeats, draws another pixel down, leaving the two pixels there again, and you get that effect. So obviously what you need to do when you're animating graphics, you have to rub out the previous graphic, graphic to raise it before you can actually print the next one. So if we go further down, look at a slightly, oops, sorry, we'll look at a, a slightly altered uh, piece of code, so we'll just copy that. So again, go to this little copy thing here, press Control C, and we'll paste that into our code and you can see what we're now we've gone into a loop I'll explain this in a little bit in a minute this WT disable but we're doing the same thing in the loop repeating 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 so I'll keep on drawing it from top to bottom and what we're doing now for every time before it prints a frog it erases the screen so the screen is blacked out plots a frog blacked out moves Y plots a frog blacks out etc etc so the previous frog is gone and we then don't have any streaking effects on the screen any bits of graphic left on However, 
as you've noticed, well, as you will notice, sorry, let's just compile it and upload it and we'll show you. So as you've noticed, there's a renders flicker and the speed is terrible. The speed is terrible because we're erasing the entire screen. So we're plotting black pixels for, I think it's like 32,000 pixels have to be plotted to black. If you work out 128 by 128 and each pixel is represented by two bytes, works out at about 32K. Uh, so it's got that to do, then it draws a bitmap, so you get the horrendous speed deg degradation and you get the flicker because it's too slow in rubbing it out before it prints that, so your eye sees the black before it sees the frog replaced. If it could get the frog on screen a lot quicker, a lot quicker, then your eye shouldn't perceive too much of a flicker, but generally most systems back in the day, uh, back in the 80s and the 90s, would struggle if you did that they would still give you that flicker effect so we have to use other techniques so that's not going to work i did talk at said talk about this basically you've got things called watchdog timers on um, any sba 266 you've got two you've got one that it will actually reset your esp 28 to esp 8266 if it doesn't come out of this main loop at least once a second or thereabouts so if you spent too much time in this loop and it takes more than a second to do whatever it is you're doing, which actually this does, if I remember right, let's just put it there. Then it resets your actual ESP8266, it resets the processor. So we can disable that watchdog, so we say, no, no, don't, don't worry about the fact that it's taking a long time, we know it's going to take a long time. So with this command, ESP WTT, so watchdog timer, is what WTT stands for, disable. And then we re-enable it there. You might say, why don't we disable it in the setup there and leave it disabled for the entire life of your program that's running. And yeah, that's what I originally did when I was writing this stuff. And then I discovered there was a second watchdog timer that kind of watches the first one, sort of. It's like a watchdog watching a watchdog. If that other watchdog timer sees that this one has not done anything in, I think it's uh, eight seconds, then it also resets your system. So by enabling it, the other watchdog can say, oh, well, yeah, that's great, that watchdog's working, it's fine, everything seems okay, I'll ignore it. But if you disable it and leave it disabled for more than eight seconds, the other watchdog timer will actually kick off and um, actually reset your system. So you disable it and you enable it. And in more situations, you need to be out of this loop in under a second anyway. But for this example, it would definitely take more than that, so I've put that in. In our actual game, when it comes to completion, we should be whipping around that loop uh, much, much faster than that, so it wouldn't actually matter that much. So how would we solve that? Well, we've got to actually come to using what we call a screen buffer. This is basically an area of memory we put aside and we do all our erasing, all our drawing in that, and that is not being put on the screen. So we do that, it's not creating any flicker. We can erase things, draw things, and when we're happy with our screen, when we've finished all the drawing that we want to do, then and only then do we put it on the actual display. Now, in the old days, uh, from the very early, about about 80, 1983 or so, 84, uh, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Computers start to come out with screen buffer memories. So programmers could fill up this and then they tell the computer to quickly display that area of memory rather than another one. And then while that's being displayed, this would be drawing on the other one and it gave completely flicker free graphics. Not necessarily lacking in lag, you can still have lag, but you'll be flicker uh, free. Now on the Arduino, we don't have screen memory that's attached to that screen. The screen memory for that screen is on the screen display itself, separated from the, I keep saying Arduino, I mean ESP8266. So, and I'll just say ESP from now on as well, that's a lot quicker than ESP8266. So we've created an area of memory aside, so if we go and have a look, we'll just scroll down to the next example. And we'll just stop there as well. For this next example, you need to download this latest uh, 773 library from myself. Um, you've probably not got this, it's only been written in the last few days. You need that because that allows us to use a thing called screen buffer memory. So download that and install it as a library. And talks about an area you may get there, but you shouldn't do. <clears throat> Read this article if you're really stuck. So we're going to download that library, install it, which we've done before. I've seen that. I've done that many times before. Look at an old video. You're not sure what to do with that. And then we need the code. Where have I put the code? Oh, that's right, yeah. So once you've downloaded that, it will have a new example for you. So I'll click onto there and go to File, 
examples this is going to go off the bottom of your screen of your screen because i'm recording an area of my screen not recording right at the bottom but you scroll down your examples you come to where it says external st7735 library and you go into where it says screen buffer test which is what i'm clicking it's off your screen but you go to these examples for external st7735 library screen buffer test click that and we'll just move that so you can see it fully and it talks about what you need to do but basically in that library the s T7735 library I've written there is a line here called screen buffer in fact I'll see if I can just bring that up so I've got another separate program I use notepad plus plus for viewing libraries generally so I've got a lot of stuff open here from the Frogger game I'm working on let me just close quite a lot of that down that we don't need um, okay so this is the header file for that library and if we look is it at the top or the bottom Let's find out, can't remember. It's coming down. There we go. So it says electronical additions. I've done something divine define screen buffer. Now by default, it's disabled because I don't want anybody who's using this code with my other projects to have problems because if you enable the screen buffer, it will use up 32k of RAM on your processor. So you can't use it on an Arduino or an Arduino Mega or whatever. You've got to use it on something with a bit of meat. So to stop people having problems of running out of memory, it's automatically disabled. So the first thing you need to do is, to, if you're using these projects, is to uncomment that and click save. Then you can come back to your Arduino screen buffer test demo, and then you can just compile that and run that, which I'll do. So you can see now, not only is it a lot faster, it's flicker free. I mean, it's many, many times faster. It's like 16 to 20 times faster or something, and with flicker free, we can run a lot more graphics on there. And the test actually does that. It runs. Um, a full set of graphics all the way across all reasonable speed all flicker free because of the screen memory because what we're doing basically every time we use this command now draw bitmap it actually instead of drawing it on the screen it actually puts it into this screen buffer memory so when we actually loop around and say clear it off to black first of all I've optimized this um, screen fill to be much much faster than the original the original couldn't work with screen memory, so it was limited in, in its how it had to do things. I looked at the spec sheets for the 7735, and they are a long 160 odd page read, and find out, find out some important facts about how it sends information over the SBI bus. So I was able to optimize how I sent my information over the SBI bus much, much more with my slightly altered version of the 7735 driver. Um, and yeah, I managed to get information over that bus a lot, lot quicker. That's how I got the speed increase. Over there, I'm still completely erasing the entire screen. I'm still sending 32Ks worth of data to erase the entire screen, but I optimized it a lot more. And actually, even what I've done, there is room, I know, I know there's things I can do to optimize that by even more factors of speed. But unless I need that, I won't do it because it is a bit of work to be done. I know it can be done, but it's a bit of, low level work which I'm not interested in getting into if I can actually get away with the speed that I've got which I think I can. I think my optimizations I've made it now goes fast enough so for every time around the loop we erase it all and we draw that and in that as I said it actually erases the screen buffer that draws this frog on the screen buffer right across the screen several times and then look at this extra line we've got now which didn't exist in the original Ladyfruit code this will then display the buffer so once we've driven it, drawn everything we want to you then call that and it quickly, and it still can be optimized even more, as I said, but quite really quickly, shoves, shoves all that data right across the screen quite quickly, like 16 times quicker than it actually did originally. And as I said, we could, I think we could at least double that speed, maybe a bit more if I wanted to, if I need to, but it would take quite a bit of fiddling around at low level, and I'm not particularly interested, as I said, in doing that now. So we can see that goes a lot quicker and it's uh, flicker free. So that will lead on to the next episode when, I mean, I've been working on it for the last few days, the next episode as well, the actual code. We're going to get the full Frogger screen going. As I said, go and have a look on YouTube if you're not sure what Frogger is. Uh, it's a game from 1982 by Konami. It was a classic back in the day. And there's an episode of Seinfeld, I think it is, that features it as well. But, but I'm going to actually get all the graphics on screen, get the cars and trucks and logs moving, and we're also going to look at a little bit, I'm not going into too much programming detail, but we're going to use object oriented programming techniques, which is, I didn't do that in Space Invaders, link up here to Space Invaders if you want to look at those series of episodes. 
didn't do that in Space Invaders, but in this one, I think it's more or less essential. Plus, it takes a little bit more memory overhead, which on the small Arduino's limited 2K of RAM, you can't really afford a lot of that, to be honest. So, anyway, I hope you've liked that. The next episode for it will be out in about two to three weeks' time due to work commitments, um, but we should have a full reasonable frog are working there maybe the frog won't be jumping but all the cars will be moving on screen and we'll see at that point whether i have got enough speed to get away with it or whether i need to do further optimizations anyway for now like uh, subscribe and share and i'll see you next time